Okay, so besides the displacement time graph, obviously, we, would, we look a lot at, at uh, velocity time graphs. So let's think about the equations that uh, would govern the motion of the velocity time graph. Or in other words, they would uh, express the line or the curve that we're going to see on this uh, graph. Now if we go back to the equations, there are actually a couple of equations that have both velocity and time. So here's one equation, and this is the equation that's going to govern the line. But there's also this equation. This has both velocity and time. And this, of course, allows us to calculate the acceleration. We're going to see this equation on the graph. We're going to see this equation on the graph. And actually, we'll even see this equation on the graph. The only one that we won't see is the one at the bottom down here, v, uh, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax, or a delta x. And the reason why we're not going to see this one is because there's no time in here. Obviously, there is velocity, and I do see displacement. But if I'm looking at a velocity time graph, I'm not going to see an equation that does not have time in any way on it. So I'm not going to write an equation here because, as it turns out, there are really two or three equations that we might think of, um, depending on what it is uh, that we're looking at for this graph. So let's start this by actually making a simple velocity time graph. Okay, so we have our VT graph, the velocity time graph, and under accelerated motion. The key thing about the, uh, the situation that we're looking at is that we are specifically looking at uniformly accelerated motion. Now, uniformly accelerated motion means that in any given time interval, if I pick one second or ten seconds or whatever I pick, the velocity of the vehicle will always change by the same amount. That's what it means to be uniformly accelerated. If I look at one second intervals, I'll find that the increase in the velocity will be the same all the time. So as a result of that, when we graph this, the shape of this graph will actually be a straight line. Okay. So this is how the, the shape of the graph uh, will be. Now, can we see anything on the graph that's immediately obvious? Well, one of the things that we can see that would be pretty clear is that this point on the x-axis is my initial velocity. Sorry, let me make that a little bigger. v naught. Also, one of the things that I can see is that if I were to look at the slope of this line, the slope of this line, The slope of this line, rather than being velocity as it was on the position time or the displacement time graph, in this case, the slope is the acceleration. Or that is to say that A, the acceleration, will be delta V over delta T. The slope of the VT graph is the acceleration of the object. I will be looking at a change in V over a change in T. So for example, I might pick two points on here. And so on this axis, I have a delta V, and on this axis, I have a delta T. And by calculating the change in the velocity over the change in time, I can figure out the acceleration of the, of the line. Okay, and so this is our first equation. This is, if you remember correctly, this was the, the definition of acceleration. It was change in V over change in T. The line itself, we would expect to see an equation to describe this line. There's an equation of this line, and you can see the equation of the line. It's actually just the uh, acceleration equation reworked to solve for v. So in this equation, there are two constants, the acceleration of the object and the initial velocity of the object. Once the object begins to move, we are assuming that it, obviously the initial velocity cannot have changed, and we are only looking at situations in which the acceleration is constant.
So by definition, this would be a constant. That leaves only v and t, which are the variables that I have on each of the axes. So if I were to write the equation of this line, the equation of this line would be v is equal to a t plus v naught. This is the equation of it's the equation of the line. So, and j just to remind you, these two are actually the same equation. There is no difference between these two equations. If we break the delta v up into v minus v naught, then we could solve for v, and you would find that this is the equation that it gives. So, really, we have not established two equations for this, but just simply uh, one equation. This a constant could be found by looking at the slope. I combine that with the initial pos initial velocity, which is along the um, y-axis here, where it hits the um, where the x-axis is zero, and then I can put together the entire equation of the motion. So it might say, for example, v is equal to uh, 9.8 meters per second squared times t plus uh, zero or plus 10 uh, meters per second um, for a specific uh, motion of an object. Okay. Now, this is the equation of the line, and the equation for the slope of the line, this uh, graph is one of those in which we'll actually look at another property that we did not look at on the last graph because it didn't actually give us anything physical, and that is that we will look at the area underneath this thing. Now, when I draw this, and we're going to close it off at, we'll say, T2. Now when I close this thing off, if you look at the shape of this thing, the shape of this graph, think about what the shape of this graph is. And if you're having trouble thinking about it, it's first of all not a triangle because there are four sides. It might be helpful if we took the graph and we turned it on its side, and then it might be a little bit easier to recognize that this is the shape of a trapezoid. I have two parallel lines and then two non-parallel lines. Uh, and it's a simple trapezoid. Now the thing about trapezoids is that the uh, formula for the area of a trapezoid is, as you may or may not know, one-half base one plus base two, in parentheses, times the height. But I do have to tell you that bases and heights are interchangeable. So in this case, I don't have two bases. The bases would typically refer to the, not typically, they would definitely refer to the, uh, the lines, I'm sorry, that are parallel to each other. But in this case, the lines that are parallel to each other are not bases, they're actually two different heights. So the formula in this case for the area of a triangle, let me put this down here, area of a trapezoid, Uh, the formula for the area of a trapezoid is A is one-half B1 plus B2 times the height, but bases and heights are interchangeable, so I could just as easily have written the formula as the area is one-half height one plus height two times the base. Okay, one of the numbers there will be one, there will be one base and two heights, or there will be one height and two bases. In this case, this is the one that we are going to use. So what I need is a formula, which will say that something is equal to one-half the two heights, or the two values on either end of the line up here, at the top of the two heights, times the width of the graph. Well, I actually have that. I have that exact formula. And there it is right there. So in this case, the displacement, or the change in displacement, or the change in position, is equal to one-half the quantity of the initial velocity plus the final velocity, end quantity times the time. Well, if you look at the similarities in these two equations, it's pretty obvious that uh, the one-half, I have two, in this case, heights, my v and v naught, and then I have a base, in this case the base on this graph would be the time. So this equation actually looks just like the equation for the area of a trapezoid. And therefore, we can use that to calculate the area of this trapezoid, and more importantly, recognize that that equation is actually represented here on this graph. So let's so leave a little space.
And in here, we would have that delta x is equal to 1 half v plus v naught times t. So take a look. Here's v naught. Here's v. What I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to add these two together. I'm going to cut them in half. And then I'm going to multiply by the width. You know, essentially, what this equation is doing is taking the equation of this line, finding the midpoint of the line, right? Remember, finding the average of two numbers is the same thing as the formula for the midpoint of a line. So essentially, this first version, 1 half v plus v naught, will tell me where the midpoint of the line is. And then what essentially I can do is if I knew where that midpoint was, I could turn this line on there. And the effect of that is to turn this into the area of a rectangle. So instead of having two velocities, I'll have a single velocity that is equal to the midpoint. And then I'll just simply multiply that height of that midpoint, the height of the midpoint, by the base. And so I end up with a rectangle. The formula is the formula for the area of a trapezoid, but the formula for the area of a trapezoid is essentially a sort of trick for making trapezoids into rectangles and then calculating the area by simply doing height times width or length times width. Um, so in this case, we can actually see the, this is really important, not the displacement. I cannot see the displacement. Um, I can't tell my position from this graph. What I can tell is how much I changed the position. How much did I change the displacement by? In order for me to know where I'm at, though, I would actually have to know the initial position. And that is something that on this graph cannot be shown. You cannot show where you started from. You can show your velocities, the time. We can find out how much we changed it by. We can figure out the acceleration. But you can never, by looking at this graph, know where did you actually start the motion at. That information would have to be provided to you outside, either in a short paragraph or maybe in the caption of the, of the um, graph. But it cannot be shown to you um, graphically. There is nowhere on this graph to show you the initial position or the initial uh, displacement. So that's just, uh, unfortunately, a, a sort of a short shortcoming of the uh, graph. But let's, uh, while we have all the equations on the graph, let's put a box around each of the three equations that we can see on this graph. Okay, and before uh, we leave this graph, well, let's take a look at like what would have happened if we had taken this line and slid this line downward so that it would have pointed to the origin. So let me use this little space down here to just sort of sketch a smaller version of the VT graph very quickly. So if we had T and V, in this case we would have a straight line looking something like this. What's different about this is that V naught is equal to zero. Okay, still true that the slope of the line is one half AT, uh, sorry, is V is equal to uh, AT plus V naught, or I could look at the slope of the line, delta V over delta t, I still get the slope. I still get the area by looking at delta x equals 1 half v plus v naught times t. But notice that in this case, v naught became 0. So this ends up becoming 1 half v times t. Now I hope that looks familiar to you because that is the same as the area of a triangle. The formula for the area of a triangle is A is 1 half base times height. Um, in this case, uh, V is representing the height. V is the height. T is the base. And then obviously we have the 1 half in there. So the general formula is the formula for a trapezoid, but under special conditions, I may find that either v naught or I could also find v. v could just as easily have been 0. In that case, I would have been looking at a triangle that sloped downward, so that my final velocity down here would have been uh, 0, and then I still get a triangle, except it would have been 1 half v naught times t. And I still end up with something that looks like the formula for the area of a uh, triangle. So whether it's a triangle or a trapezoid, you can essentially use the same equation, just, you know, you really have to pay attention to whether one of the values may have been zero or not, in which case it will, it will slightly simplify and make it a little bit easier for you. So with these three equations, you should be able to essentially find anything that you need to know about an object, um, except for
its initial position. Delta X, V, V naught, T, the acceleration of the object, um, the displacement or the change in position, you can find out just about anything on a VT graph.